it's on our back line and we're just gonna boot it to the front and hope that somebody gets it that's not soccer mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. if this works out is soccer oh yeah yeah and it, and it shows yeah. that we can be a complete team again the, these are all what's what's crazy we keep saying if and if and if we don't know that's, the man that's I the thing is like him. you're gonna love mm. this i want to hear it i'm objective you're critical and it goes at the disco Ooh, he's mm -hmm. join the mixtape 615 today tomorrow yesterday it is the dopest supporter group in all of nashville Never. oh i'm ready bro i'm ready let's do it because testing testing one <laughs> Two, three. Yo, check it out. We are the Mixtape 615, baby. The supporter group of note for Nashville Soccer Club. And if you are a fan of Nashville soccer and all of its soccer ways, well, then you just got to be here. We want you in the mix right now. This is a place to be. Everybody lock in. Check it out. I'm your boy, Tunji. <laughs> and you know what's next. Young Infamous Turtle, S D Soccer Face, SF Doom, the Big Kahuna, and the Little Tuna Sandwich. And little Tuna. Steam Papi, Yamami, Steam Papi. Yo, it's I'm too lit because it's a Wednesday night and I had half off whiskeys at Southside Kitchen the Pub. Then guess who just got paid? Your boy. Look at look at this. Look at this. I've been sipping my ties on this beach in Belize, and trust me, I'm feeling cool like a summer breeze. I'm the dude with the cleanest pair of Jordan ones that you ever did see. That is the golden boy with the golden voice. Hey, and you know who I am when I'm when I'm up north, right? Chicago Mike from the West Side. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yo, everybody locked is that in. Friends We've with got the some... prison mic. I don't know. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh I my don't gosh. Know who oh, that you is. never watched I The keep... Office? Oh, hey, I, man. Keep, I keep my nose clean. All right. <laughs> All right, All right. boss. <laughs> Anyways, guys, we got a great show for you today. Great pod for you today. We have been in the weeds trying to get this uh, off season, you know, gloom up off of us. <laughs> but we got some more people over here. Austin, I need you to tell the tell tell the listeners who you are, brother man. All right, all right. What's up, guys? My name is Austin, aka Wild Main. That's how y'all know me. That's what's Woo. on my jersey, you know. AKA Ginger Snap. 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 AKA the Fumbling Dublin. AKA Redbeard, aka Chicky Chicky Pom Pom. I think pom -pom. I forgot that one last time. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we are so excited to be here. Logan, tell them who you are. All right, everybody. My name is Logan. I am AKA Beer Man, AKA Beer Coach Man. Carson to all Ooh. my students over at Rocket Ship. <laughs> Absolutely. This is the Mixtape 615 brought to you by the Mixtape 615 supporter group, the dopest You're supporter group in all of MLS and all That's of soccer us. and all of the world and sports, all of it in this galaxy the dopest supporter mm -hmm. group in the galaxy. We love it. We're excited. If you want to be part of us, if you want to join in with us and this excitement, this joy, this rocking, awesome dopeness, jump on, on in with us at the mixtape 615.com or that is mixtape 615.com rather yep. jump in there. You can actually join in, in an individual or a family uh, we'd love to have you guys that gets you your dues pay. That gets you your new scarf for the new season that's coming up. We just had a whole meeting about the new design and everything. We're really we got excited perks, about bro. how we, looks. we got perks for you. Oh, absolutely. Not only do you get perks with us, but you get perks with the club. It's really cool. If you're wanting to jump in and see some awesome things when it comes to oh, away yeah. games, when it comes to meeting players, all the fun stuff when you jump into a supporter group and of course the best supporter group is the mixtape 615 so Tell we them. do want to see you as part of that we do want to see you as part of us mixtape 615.com jump in with us now as you jump in with us we're going to be jumping in to a new segment that we've got for this week the nsc ya austin Who's talk this? to us a little bit about this all right. So, yes, this is NSC. -a. Last week, the um, club announced a few of the club options that they're actually exercising. Um, and then some of the decline contracts, some of the players that we're allowing going into free agency uh, here in just a couple a uh, couple of days, I believe it's actually starting uh, starting soon. So um, or at least some of the player um trades and pickups and all of that is allowed to happen here in a couple of days but a couple of the players that we uh, are keeping um we actually exercised uh the contract options on josh bear 
and Lucas McNaughton. So sure up the, the defense, uh, some of those players who came in and actually showed up. Uh, I thought Josh Bayer um, looked pretty good at the opportunities that he had. We didn't have, like Tunji talked about, I think last pod, that it, we didn't have a lot to compare it to for prior seasons, but he did look good when, when he um, had those opportunities. And then Lucas McNaughton, as long as he's staying healthy, he, he does sure up a lot of that backfield, um, you know, that back line rather. And so we're looking forward to that. But some of the players that we are saying in SC a two um, are uh, Nick Depay, who I am very much saying see ya. He did not earn oh. that money. He basically stole it. He, he came in, got injured, sat on the contract, and then said, peace. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need that check back. We're going to need that check exactly, back before you leave. Right? <laughs> hey, he's he's that not the back, only one bro. who sat down in, in that Gary jail, if you will, after a long time of just sitting out. Who, who, else, yeah. who else, bro? And I mean, then, uh, Ah, uh, okay. Okay, Loba, the infamous. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was about to say it's 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 the same story. You know, new year, different guy, same story. Yeah, who yeah. are we gonna sign next year or who's gonna sit on the bench all year injured? <laughs> Golly. Um, well, I mean, that's kind of the thing with Nashville though, is like they they do take they do <laughs> take big swings on guys yeah. who you're just like kind of like, really? And when I say big swings, I mean big swings for Nashville. Like Nick the Pie, I maybe we could classify that as a big swing, but it's just like for us to for us to miss so so regularly almost on on yeah. like throughout the years. It's just kind of like, and I'm not just talking about Nick. I'm talking about some of these other guys yeah. that uh, yeah, yeah. that we let go as well that you're gonna go into. But it's just a a really troubling trend um, that I see from Nashville SC. Like we do we like but it's because we go for these undervalued people we're trying to build a team like from guys that no one knows about we won't have to pay them huge money but like we're going to get huge value out of them and that's a very dangerous game to play especially if you're trying to get better every year it's also what gary is actually you know giving some props to gary it's what he's good about he does bring something out of some players that are uh maybe undervalued or not well known he does bring some um kind of kind of brings brings uh the best out of some some of these players i mean I when you talk about a big swing i mean look at fafa Pico, who worked out really well for us this last year why did yeah. we let it i Which, don't, still don't get that speaking of he had speaking a of yeah. contract and he's 33 years old so he's really? out of contract a couple of these other players out of contract luke hawkinson um who he he stepped Hi. in um but he's also <laughs> yeah it's like he stepped in a few NSC times but he's also bro. not not been the best so nsc to him NSC-a. and then um the we declined options no, here we go a couple more couple more we've got uh lawrence wyke who he got in like once or twice during u.s Ooh. open cup um and <laughs> then ethan zubak who i actually did like some of nah, the things that i, I saw I from like ethan zubak I want, it man, wasn't, I want ethan back bro I want that's what ethan i was saying back, i like some of the things that i saw from him it wasn't quite I to just, the extent that we wanted to see but then this last one El Capitan, El Capitan, oh, Captain, my captain, Dax <laughs> McCarty. Wait, Dax do we, McCarty. should we do the salute? Should we do the full salute? All right, the let's full do it, salute. Yeah. Oh, wait, can Dax I do McCarty. Wakanda? Oh, Wakanda, I'm going to do Wakanda, Wakanda yeah. forever. Here we go. <laughs> All right. I'm giving the scout regiment from Attack on Titan. From, from Attack, Attack on, on Titan. Titan. There we go. Look at this guy. Look at this. But at Dax this guy. McCarty, the guy who, he he was Natural SC's first captain. Tunji, what, what are you feeling with this one? Ooh. Man, uh, you know what? It's I'm probably the most level headed, I think, of most fans. I definitely yeah. feel like, yeah, we, we could have given him another year, mm. but I'm just like, I was saying it all year too. I was like, dude, this is his last year. I think it, yeah. I, personally, I'm like, bro, Dax, if you feel like you have it left in the tank, go ahead and do it, brother. Man, nobody can stop you. But like, if you ended right here, right now, if you retired, especially if you retired, uh, the first captain of NSC, and that was your, you know, you know basically that's that was where you ended your career. You'd yeah. be a legend. You already are a legend of the game. You would be an even bigger legend as opposed to going somewhere else and rolling the dice and maybe getting injured or just not playing as much, not fitting into the system. Like, I don't know, man. To me, it was the it was the the proper move to make letting Dax walk. Um, yeah, it doesn't make it any it doesn't make it suck any less, you know, Mm-mm. or suck any. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's just like yeah. golly, but it is what yeah. it is. We need to get a better midfield, so. We, we gotta sure up the midfield. Um, it is sad, Logan. Your thoughts on on Dax or or maybe even Fafa losing those two both in the midfield? 
I mean, for me, the the bigger loss uh, outside of leadership uh, on the attacking side is definitely going to be Fafa. Um, mm -hmm. Man, I, I said it all year. He is a gnat on the field. He is annoying to defenses. He finds his way. That little man finds his way into little spots and spaces. And we saw it in League's Cup over and over. We literally saw it in the League's Cup final. He was the man who headed that ball in with a diving header to make that ball, like to make that tying goal to send us into PKs. Fafa was our was our uh, League's Cup dark horse, honestly. Oh, absolutely. He, he was what pushed us, not just in that last game, but throughout the League's Cup. It was really a lot of like... Uh, unheralded work from Fafa Picot. Um, and, and then he so, continued it afterwards. Yeah. I'm not saying he made all the goals or anything, but like he definitely continued to show up. He's one yeah. of the, he's one of those yeah. that continued to show up after leagues cup when we were in our slump regardless. And he got angry. He was on fire. He had passion and high it was work great from this thing. man. High. He's a workhorse in every sense of the word. Now, yeah, I mean, I, I wish him the best of luck in his next endeavor. Yeah, but again, I mean, he's like, 33 it, years it old. Felt like he I think he still has a little bit left, but I do definitely agree. does. I, I just I felt it, like it wasn't really working for him in Nashville. You know, what I mean, like Gary and him just didn't seem to get on the same page. He was putting he was like you you mentioned it before. It, it Logan. Was he was like he, subbing him in in the yeah. weirdest moments like that. This guy is a guy mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, it was play subbing him, him don't in play him. in the weird moments or subbing him out for players who were similar to him. But had you placed them side by side, would have been a much better option because he still yeah. had gas in the tank. There was one or two times where he came out and he was mad that he was coming out because he's like, mm -hmm. I can still go. Yeah. And it was yeah. just like, I love that's, seeing that that's kind of fire. Was, that's, speci that's specifically what I'm talking about. It was just like, it looked like they weren't on the same page. All like mm -hmm. you know, they, they just it just looked like it wasn't as smooth as a relationship as it should be, especially with a guy who's who's giving you as much value as Fafa gave us this year. So yeah, yeah I mean it's it's sucks to see him go, man. It really does. But if he if he did it, if it doesn't work, let's hurry up and this slump was ugly. The the yeah. slump yeah. that we went on after Lee's Cup and even before Lee's Cup started was ugly. So right now I'm it in full on in like I, I would say I've had time since the last game to process this se the season, and I'm not speaking emotionally here. I'm just like, dude, make the moves you have to make, cut yes. the people that you have to cut. All I want to see at this point is results. So if you cut somebody and you don't bring us some something in replace or make the team better, then we're gonna be having an even like an even more emotional conversation in the in you know after this season and whatever happens after this off season, but I'm not, you think the going fire to be Gary holding on to loud my, now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, they're coming for him, man. They're coming for him. And They've been coming at the same time, I'm giving him so. a chance. I'm giving him and the whole organization a chance yeah. to show me that like, look, either you guys are going to be elite and, and make that next, that next jump that we need to make. And you got to mm -hmm. be cold hearted to do that. This is a business at the end of the day. If yeah. the results aren't there, cut them. And I'm, I'm, that's how I am. You guys know how yes, I am. It's the, guys, it's the instant gratification. You guys know I stand on that, business. That I'm just not a fan of. <laughs> what? It's that instant gratification of it has to happen now or get rid of them and start over. Whereas that's not necessarily the way that it should be when it comes to the league itself. Cause it does what has to, to happen develop. now. What has to happen? Like, now? Oh, we got to win now. Like win now we, or we never. We do have to win now. What are you talking about? No, but we shouldn't have to like immediately think, that we this should isn't immediate final. this is five years almost you know we're going we into five about? years we're in. going into the fifth year and i haven't <laughs> seen true, the but... types of improvement mm -hmm. like look last year we took a great step with leagues cup we and getting into the yes. the con but then you see how hard we fell on our face it was almost like we took two steps forward and then like 1.5 steps back so like that big jump that we made turned into a little tiny jump because of the fact the way we ended that season with a whimper. Yeah. So well, it, if it you was, ask me, hey, show me something, Nashville SC. Show me something. Well, well especially with four leagues coming up, too, or four different, you know, styles of play and four different uh, leagues that we're going to be or, and Cubs that we have a chance for, that's a huge deal. And we do need younger talent. We do need guys who can sure up that midfield, who can go for longer, especially leading into that. Yep. Well, speaking of these changes, speaking of needing to win now, um, that's what we're going to talk about in our next segment. We've got a new edition. Um, we'll say, you know, 
Fafa, Dax, you'll always be in our hearts, but the uh, other guys, NS, see ya. See ya. We'll yep. see you guys right after the break. And we're back from being back. This segment in the it's aptly named because of the, the you know the spirit of the season uh we are heading into that uh eggnog and whiskey time of the year holiday time holidays but what we're going to talk about we just finished talking about uh who we lost now we're going to talk about who we gained mm-hmm. and so the segment is called drew you see what i see Set that was good wasn't it beer man to the sf doom <laughs> <laughs> Drew, Love you it. see what I see. We have to have fun with this. <laughs> no, you have to, uh, man. This it's the off season, and we got ceremoniously unceremoniously booted out. So oh, this yeah. is what you get. This is what you get. Yeah, we're, we're festive. I mean, look, I got my Spider-Man Very. sweater. I got my Christmas lights all decorated. You're in green, Tungy. <laughs> I'm in red. Hey, hey there all, you right, go. All, right, all right, all right, all right. Bring it in, guys. <laughs> so, who we got? This is what the people actually want to know. They don't care about our Christmas uh, feelings. <laughs> the people want to know who Drew Yearwood is. We also want to know who Drew I was about Yearwood to say, is. I want to know too. <laughs> so, this is who he is, guys. He's uh, he's bar- of Barbadian descent, born in uh, England, uh, Harlow, Essex, Essex, to be exact. Um, I think he's a Pisces, which is awesome. I'm also a Pisces, so there you go. Uh, <laughs> Does that matter? He he played a season. He came up through the Arsenal uh, yeah. actual youth system, so he's a product of Arsenal. That's another point for me because, I, as you all know, I'm a big Arsenal fan. Yeah, but um, then who did he play for? We don't talk about it. I mean, who did he play for though? After <laughs> that? he played, he played, he played with he played uh, one of my rivals. With, um, no, he played with uh, what's his face? Uh, what's, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. <laughs> the the um inner miami's inner miami's owner david beckham yes. holy crap oh beckham. he played he played for he played with david beckham's son over at uh brentwood brentford actually no i think he played for brentford level two either way he was over at brentford for a year <laughs> and then he, he came over to to he came over to mls to the to the red bulls new york red bulls as a on a dp deal and uh probably one of the most interesting things that he did while there was Get so frustrated that he kicked the ball into the stands and, and hit a fan in the face, apparently. So this is what we have. We don't know a whole bunch about Drew Yearwood, but we know that he is someone who may or may not be a Dax McCarty replacement. I know. I mean, crazy. We have a little bit more than that when it comes. What, to what do you got? What do you got on Drew? To give the pe- give the people what they want to know about Drew Yearwood. All right, for the last four years. Is he years, the answer? For the last four years, he's been at the at the New York Red Bulls. In that time, in four years, he's made three goals. He's had three assists, 13 shots on target. So as far as being somebody who's going to attack, I don't know if he's going to be the attacker that we need. However, 39% of his passes are a long ball pass, meaning that he is sending it from mid-range from that, like, you know, at the at, at, in that second third, if you will, of the of the of the half uh, or of the of the pitch, in that in that middle area to his attacking players, so very much so he could have that assist skyrocket, especially with our our, our taller guys. Now that we've got Super uh, Sam, now that we've got Super Sam Surgeon, yep, uh, he can send it down to. Our 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 MVP, our 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 heart MVP, honey. Forever Mark. MVP. Forever, oh, forever MVP. MVP. Yeah. So there are some positives when it comes to what he's doing. Um his pack uh, his passing accuracy is about the same as our average accuracy, around that 72%. Is that good mark. or bad? That's what I'm saying. I'm I like, mean, is that, is that, <laughs> I thought we were signing guys to move the needle, not stay in the same so, spot. So if we're looking at it, the Red Bulls as a whole passing accuracy is actually a little bit lower than ours. So the fact that his is higher than their average 
What it, is this tra- are you doing transitive property deal. right now? <laughs> it could be a good thing for us. See, the best thing that I've seen uh, from him is um, Tunji sent this graphic over that I love. It was comparing him and Dax because, you know, that's kind of who, who we're trying to replace. We lost a big man in the middle who has been our captain for years. But the, the biggest thing was the uh, stat that was the shot creating actions. Mm shot creating actions that what is, is what, what is that? we need what um is- so basically what a shot creating action is um it is an action step you're taking whether it's whether it's a, a pass whether it's a movement through the middle um whether you personally are taking it whether you're passing it to somebody setting them up for an assist it is creating a shot so i mm. i'm i'm seeing this stat where it tells me he's creating chances um, which we've got the attack. We've got Hani. We've got Sam Surge um, up in the front. We've got Jacob Schaffelberg. We, we all know the speed that he brings on the edge. If if we've got a guy who is creating chances, and then you've got those guys uh, able, if they're actually able to finish this year, <laughs> but you've got those guys finishing it off, then I think that that is a positive for us. Yeah, I mean, so... With going back to that graphic, that's a graphic that I got from the Broadway Sports Media. They had posted uh, something that uh, some basically a, a pie chart or some sort of chart. I don't know. I, I never uh, was good in. I was never a math guy. A chart, <laughs> a side by side comparison. With side Dax by McCarty. side comparison, comparison of stats for Drew Yearwood and Dax McCarty. And one thing that immediately jumps up to you or jumps out at you is, yeah, he is definitely a lot more aggressive when it comes to. Uh, moving the ball forward, um, taking those actions, like he said, uh, to create chances and uh, uh, successful. Another stat that I really liked that was really high, apparently really high, was uh, successful take ons. I did see some footage of him chasing a guy down when he was over at uh, New York Red Bulls and, and then just like pushing it back, like uh, dispossessing the the his opponent and then taking it back to the other side of the field. And I was like, well, that looked great. So, again, we look at these the stats. We look at what we what we've talked about, what we know. On paper, he looks like he could be what we're looking for, which is a mid. He looks like he could be the answer, right? Or that, part that of the answer. Solid part six. of the answer. That's looking at our six. midfield and its inability to create chances, its inability to move the ball forward. On paper, Drew Yearwood looks like he could make I a mean, dent and 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 move that needle, like we were talking about. To where now we're 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 playing better offensive soccer and what most people would consider more enjoyable soccer. More his, fun, his like, progressive you know? passes are are worlds higher than where Dax's were. His interceptions on the defensive side are huge too. That yeah. was something that I was going to point out. Was the interceptions just to put it in comparison for all of you that aren't looking at this uh, graphic? Um, the comparison is. Dax McCarty had 40 interceptions on the year and he played uh, more games um, than than uh, Drew Yearwood. Drew Yearwood had 92. That's a percentage. That's a percentage? Yes. Okay, then I might be reading this. <laughs> percentile rank versus midfielders. He yeah, is in the yeah. 92nd percentile. Sorry, but there still, he is in the 92nd percentile. Either way you look at it, um, that is good great he is in the 92nd percentile as far as interceptions go that uh is is really good because it's not only telling me that he's good on the defensive end um but he's aggressive and he's not afraid to turn the ball over and then that's i think leads to a lot of those um shot creating actions for sure and and you know what he kind of he kind of reminds me of or makes me think when i look at just again all we have is is some of these stats and what we actually seen from him Not um, in, in video. video yeah so what i mm-hmm. what he kind of reminds me of is like the anti brian anunga right <laughs> like, like he's like brian anunga is like you know he's highly aggressive but like also highly defensive right he's just Gonna, he's always going to be further he's back. Always passing the ball keeping, backwards. Passing the ball backwards. Has progressive passes forward. Yeah, he's he's highly aggressive. He will chase you down like like you owe him money, <laughs> and then <laughs> and then and then push that ball aggressively forward. So like he feels like the counterbalance to Brian and Nunga to me. What and do you guys think about you're that? You're just going to talk about the uh, weight difference between the I two mean, of them. Also, <laughs> Brian, <laughs> Brian Anuga is much bigger pounds, than this yeah, guy. Yeah. <laughs> 
but I, I'll say this: uh, one of the one of it, being in that sixth position, that that midfield position where it, it, it kind of seems like they're trying to put him in. Um, one of his uh, biggest stats is his possession game as well. We've mm-hmm. been talking, you know, for a while. We can't move the ball up the mid. He might be our answer for that. Well, you know what that possession play gives you, right? When you have a, t- uh, a, a, a player who knows how to possess the ball, who knows how to what is called hold up the play, that's what happens. The midfield, what people don't know, and this is I'm speaking as a former midfielder, center mid, um, Lighthouse Christian School baby, you already know, Antioch all day, go. stand up. Anyways, so playing as a and i was a really good center mid at that too hey, enough about <laughs> i usually me. i usually just played left out yeah yeah well i don't know what that is but the uh <laughs> the center gets murky the center gets dirty that's where a lot of the game happens and if mm-hmm. you are a team like what i saw that frustrated the most as a former center mid watching national sc plays when the ball got got to the middle of the field it seemed like our guys got uh, jumpy. It seemed like they weren't making good decisions. They were, they were, they were just too. They weren't calm. They weren't in the. In, they're, they're literally in the eye of the storm, which I think yeah. is the center of the field, and they were just making terrible decisions. Decisions that you make when you're not comfortable. So with a guy like this, if he can hold up play, is the answer. That is the answer to that that problem. That one of the pro- problems that we have in our midfield. If he can help us calm down in the middle hold the ball in the middle give the defender i'm sorry the the rest of the team honey sam uh shaft if you give them space and time to start making uh, offensive moves towards goal as opposed to like all right it's in this it's in this it's in it's on our back line and we're just gonna boot it to the front and hope that somebody gets it that's not soccer Mm-mm. this mm. if this works out is soccer oh yeah yeah and it, and it shows yeah. that we can be a complete team Again, the, these are all what's what's crazy. We keep saying if and if and if we don't know that's, the man. That's the I don't thing know is like, him. Well, like, and it's not even finalized until I think the eleventh, right? So it's so yeah, <laughs> not I mean, even a done deal granted, yet. <laughs> it's it's a done deal. I mean, we yeah. kind of we kind of expect that. It's I also do yeah. love the fact that he's coming in, you know, during the off season like this, pretty much right away. Coming in, it, it's very similar to the way that we did with Schaffelberg. Very similar to the way that we did with. Uh, Fafa Co. So we've got some really good chance to do this, but you know, Tunji, I think you said it. You know, at best, I think the title of this segment says it best. Drew, you see what I see because I'm not sure what I'm seeing yet. We'll we'll find out. Okay, so there's that. We have some really really interesting and juicy stuff to get into. We're gonna spill some tea on supporter club. Uh, drama that's happening over on the West Coast. I think it's the tuned. first time we've ever gone outside of uh, outside Nashville of Nashville realm. too. Yeah. Uh, I hope we don't get lost. I hope we come back. <laughs> I hope we don't get fined the way that nah, they we'll did. Be... But I'm just Never here that. so I don't get fined. Never that. We don't got we don't got LA money. All right. We're just humble. <laughs> all right, guys, stay tuned. Come back and we're gonna talk. We're gonna talk about the fire that's burning in LA. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you guys for sticking around with us. We are in our next segment. LAFC definitely started this fire. Um, or rather, 3252, their supporter group, or one of their supporter groups, started a huge fire during the Houston Dynamo game, during that Eastern Conference final uh, playoff game. Set off a yes. lot of flares. Uh, they were supposed to be gold flares. I know they kind of show up red in some of the images. Uh, these gold flares that they set off smoking up the entire arena. It's crazy if you haven't seen the videos, but the MLS came down hard on them. Flares are not necessarily allowed in the MLS currently. I know we see it in several other leagues. Uh, It's very prevalent in uh, the Netherlands. Uh, I know some of their teams go crazy with these cold flares. However, in the MLS, it's not allowed. So you see, 
massive delays that are caused here. Um, it's hard to see where the ball is when tracking it with the camera. And so MLS came down hard on LAFC uh, for not making sure to keep that environment safe. Uh, they were not, you know, that no paperwork was signed about it or anything like that. So a hundred thousand dollar fine came Ooh. to LAFC. Now they do have LA money, but that does not necessarily mean that it is always going to be the best money to spend on just flares for one game. Uh, LAFC has now suspended three one uh, or three two five twos uh, status as a supporter group. Uh, suspended their supporter group in general, uh, pending an investigation. It's pretty crazy, but there are some crazy takes on it. Some people are really happy with the suspension. The fine. Uh, some people are really uh, upset with it. I kind of want to know where you guys stand. So, Tunji, talk to me about it. Are you upset with it? Are you happy with it? Uh, how do you feel about this? Yeah, before I get started, just a point of clarification. The 3252 is actually to LAFC as the back line is to National SC. So it's the collective of all of their supporter groups. And I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that 3252, that number came from how many seats they have in their uh in their supporter section my apologies yeah so it's not like a, anyways that's what it is um how do i feel i'm uh i've seen a lot i've seen a lot um let me talk about i guess the negative part of it uh so obviously as supporter groups as people who are partaking supporter culture who are in the supporter section of all the national sc games and they're helping create the environment we all know how much of a headache it is to deal with mls and their their standards of what we can and can't do mm -hmm. um and and we all also know that flares are a big no-no huge no-no so it's 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 interesting that they Try, that they made that step because that was that's an aggressive stand. That oh they yeah, made. it wasn't. That, that's, it wasn't that's, just that's a uh, big one or two like yeah. people. That no, was, that's a I big mean, middle finger to the, to the MLS. Yeah. That's a big middle finger to Soccer Don, uh, mm. essentially. So they were trying to make a statement with that. They knew what they were doing. And again, the um the things I've seen online, people who were there, you know, there's people who were asthmatic who said that, who were complaining about what how it was affecting them and people who were worried about the, de the debris and all that stuff that was hitting their young kids. I can understand that. I, I really can. But ultimately I'm just like, dude, there was no harm, no foul. I, if they were cold flares, like you said, that's, this is what I want to see as a, as a soccer. I'm, I, again, I'm not someone who's like, you know, there's a huge, we were talking about earlier, there's a huge stigma of American soccer uh, fans trying too hard to be ultras ultras being the, the most annoying level of soccer fan you can be, but also mm -hmm. the most passionate. Wow. So I, I, you know, I get, but for me, when I saw three, two, five, two, all the groups and what they were doing, I always looked at that over here in Nashville and be like, I want to replicate that here in, in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So, and I guess where I truly stand on it is I feel like there's gotta be some level that you can allow fans to express themselves. That's more than what we have right now. Um, you know, with flares and that type of thing, especially if you can control it, I feel like they should find a way to do that because look how awesome that looked. That I mean, that image is going to make like yeah. global global news. It's oh, going to yeah. be. I uh, mean, it's already on the ESPN FC. Uh, That's if what MLS that wants. Instagram. MLS Apple, they want that, and it's yeah. annoying that they tried to use the images on their socials. They will be using oh, those I'm, images I'm sure somewhere. They will. they will be using those images somewhere. Yet they came down and punished fans in the way that they did. Again, they broke the rules. This is true, but some rules were made to be broken. Tunji so, out. Yeah, I mean, Tunji, you I mean, you say it, you know, pretty eloquently there. Obviously, you're for it, uh, I, I think, in, in in a lot of ways. But me and you are both super big, you know, Premier League. Uh, you know, Austin, I know you're a Bundesliga fan. Is this something you're also into? Like, are you are you pro? flare are you uh oh no flare I in love there it. no okay. no no i love it if you look at like those images multiply that by like three and those are like the saint Pauli fans in the bundesliga i mean you get yeah. nuts i've been to three different bundesliga matches in germany and a champions league match in munich and the fans are nuts are crazy but it's all due to passion it's not passion. due to yep. trying to harm somebody it's not due 
uh, to trying to hold up the game. It's not, it's not, there's no ill will about it. It's just showing your love for your team in the most passionate way. There is nothing like um, soccer, football, whatever you call it, when it comes to the supporters and the fans. Whenever you're in that, it is electric and you feel it and you want to see stuff like this. Now, yes, I do understand from a uh, broadcasting standpoint. I mean, you saw the images uh, as a that, uh, were That's just on the VAR screen and everything. Yeah. So if from a broadcasting from VAR, from all of that, I do understand it because you couldn't hardly see anything. The smoke gathered. Um, it was very hazy in there. We've seen that in Geotis when it's like really humid. Uh, oh, yeah. Even the, the three smoke bombs summer. that we set up, you know? Yeah. I mean, you're seeing it on the screen right now, how hazy it was. I mean, they, they had to delay the game a little bit before they could really get that cleared out. Um, but again, like I said, you've seen it in the uh, in, in Nashville, in Geotis, just from the three or four smoke bombs that we set off. If it's um, if it's humid, it lingers a little bit if it's longer, extremely humid and the wind's not necessarily blowing. Yeah, that's yeah. called that's called home field advantage. Yo, like it, to, <laughs> I mean, no, for real, like they that's it they, is. They're, yeah, you know, that were they playing that's at home in that put, game? Or, they were, were yeah, they, playing they were Houston? playing in LAFC. Yeah. OK, so that was their last game of this of that's it, yeah, because it's in Columbus. Last game of the the season, it was going to go to either Cincy yeah. or Columbus, right? Or was it always going to be in Columbus? Yep. No, it was going to be either no, no, Cincy no, no. or Columbus. Yeah, at so, that so yeah. At that so, point, it was guaranteed to be in Columbus, but mm -hmm. they didn't see that. They didn't know that. Until, but yeah. at the same time, that's th th these fans, these are the fans that you want to promote, that you want to put on your yeah. all of your promotional stuff for this league to get more people in. Look, I know that there's tons of levels of soccer in this in this country the united states of america that are all have passionate fan bases but let's be real the mls is the one that's well it should be the one that is going to really break us through and turn american soccer you u.s soccer into a powerhouse and you it starts from the roots it starts from the fans so See, I my don't view like on the it, punishment. I don't like the punishment. Yeah, I think that it's exactly. I think it's because they because they that's what MLS needed. That's what Don but Garber I love it, wants. But I love it from the fans. Like my thought process is, if I can get those people in Nashville, I'll take the fine. I know I'm not the Heck one yeah. paying it, but Heck hopefully, yeah. I wish Heck. that Nashville SC would say, "Let's give us the fine." These are the people that we want supporting us. I, I, I want people with that passion, but I do want them to act smarter. No, you know what I'm so, saying? So like this is something well we, this is something we've seen in some of the games and 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 this is this is my kind of take on this. This is kind of what I'm I, I'm seeing a lot of both sides. I'm still kind of mixed in it cuz I've I've handled the cold flare. I I understand what it can do. I I know it's not harmful. Um and I did see several tweets very much like you said that um, you know, asthma problems. Uh, they're worried about their kids getting hit by the by the sparks, um, not being able to see the game from you know the other side of the field. Um, those are legitimate issues because if I'm paying, especially a ticket that, for that, if I'm sitting in midfield, I'm probably paying you know six seven hundred dollars to sit in the Eastern Conference final or a Western Conference final playoff game. And at that point, you're not just affecting the supporter section; you're no, you're, you're affecting, affecting the whole the stadium, entire <laughs> stadium, and so. I understand uh, some of those woes. Um, at the same time, you're also seeing tweets that people were like, no, that lit the atmosphere up and it got electric even more so. And it was even better. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And I think the same would happen. And if we were to, and again, I'm not, I'm not advocating for this. No, uh, and no way am I full, advocating full disclosure, for this. We are not advocating for flares to be used in Geodas at the time of this recording. At the time of this recording. Currently <laughs> not allowed in the MLS. Exactly. But all I'm saying is if that happened in Nashville, I would guarantee you, I would put good money that the, the stadium would be absolutely on fire. So, I don't know. My Not thing literally. on this is that oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was well, a good to one. Get, to get kind of back to it, like my my thought process isn't necessarily I don't want this or this style of fan or this type of fan. I want people that are this passionate but they need to make sure that they are this passionate about what's going on on the pitch, not just trying to come and create a crazy environment for crazy environment's sake. I, I understand, understand we want it to be yeah. a party, but we want it to be a party during the game 
to support our people. And if it hinders us being able to support our team, if it hinders us from being able to uh, be a true supporter group uh, and having privileges taken away from us, from being able to go to away games, uh, from being able to bring flags to away games or drums to away games, things like that, that cre- help create that fun environment. That's where it gets a little muddy. Well, for why me because- is it hindering? Us? It's hindering us because we're subject to the evil empire. That is MLS major it, league soccer. Yes. And no, you know what I'm saying like, and, 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 and L- three, two, five, two is the, the, the small band of rebels. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, they're not the, the only empire, ones man. that have been that have they're, they're rebel scum, and general. I'm on their side. That's what I'm gonna. That's where I'm. I'm gonna die on that hill. Sorry. No, that's fine. And again, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm against what they did, um, but it is more of um, you're saying it, it hinders us. But I'm I'm saying that the, I'm it saying, hinders us because those are the rules put in place. But that's why I'm saying MLS it hinders could us. put in in place yes, better rules that would allow stuff like that. How I mean, until we do that, it in Netherlands, until but we can't that do it happens, here. Well, those talks I until know until that happening. happens. Yeah, well, until that happens, we're not going to see the change. We've got to see. I mean, maybe if we see more uh, rebel groups like this, um, you know, since you went there, maybe <laughs> we'll see a change in the rules. Uh, but until then, we'll see higher fines. If these things, if these <laughs> things happen, ultimately the teams get fined and the groups lose um, lose privileges. some of their rights. Yeah. Well, lose some of the privileges. These are not privileges. Right what do you think is going to happen to right. LAFC? What do you think <laughs> is going to happen to the to the three two five two? Because that's what I'm most interested in seeing so, out of all of this. Because they I they don't think anything's there. going to happen. They made a I, statement at the end of the know. season, and everyone's going to forget about it by the start. I, you I think, think so. I think sanctions. I don't think happen. anything is going to happen. So I, I don't. <laughs> I, I disagree. I think certain sanctions are going to happen for one to two games. I think they're not going to punish it. It's going to be more of a slap on the wrist. No one's going to talk because no one's going to tell them who did what and who found what. And if they do, shame on you. You're an independent supporter group, supposedly, uh, or there are a few independent supporter groups there at LAFC, I know, supposedly. So don't be ratting out your people. But at the same time, uh, I, I think those things will come in. But because it's going into the off season, because it's, you know, going to be two months before the next home game is played, you know, two and a half months before the next home game is played. There's probably not going to be a lot that's going to be done. And a lot of so people what you guys are that. telling me is that the, the big bad MLS is going to just forget that this happened. No, the MLS isn't. That's why they find LAFC a hundred thousand dollars. But I think I've taken this, their steps. And then MLS they've left gonna, it up to MLS LAFC. Is increase fines <laughs> if it continues to happen because of where they're sitting right now. But one of the biggest things I think is a big issue with this is the under leagues, just like you were talking about. Some of the under leagues and people that are just now starting to get pyro in smokes, they're going to now be held under scrutiny. Um, small things that we've done, even just to try and get smoke uh, uh, from two stands to four stands. That's going to be held under scrutiny across the league. And so it does hinder some of that league pushback in each individual club, depending on how they take it. Now, we haven't talked to the club about it. We haven't talked to the back line about it yet. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of emotions and, and, and different opinions and feelings about it in general. But as it is right now, 3252 is under suspension. And LAFC has been fined a hundred thousand dollars. I do not want that and to happen in Nashville. Pe- and there's here. a pending in- internal investigation. Look, I think when you've had the type of run that LAFC has had with the oh, intensity of the, yeah. of the of the of the that's where let's be honest, man. When we're talking about fans who are just who are like when we're talking about the hotbed of soccer passion. LA's got to be one of them between yeah. that, that uh, El Trafico rivalry, which the, the images that we see over oh, on this beautiful. side of, of the States, it. you know what I'm saying? So I think when you've had that type of run, you can push the envelope a little bit. Now, maybe they pushed it a little too far. And <laughs> when I say a little, they, they pushed it very far, but look, I'll say look, we, we need people. We have, to, we as fans have to start pushing 
we keep talking about the players reaching that next level so we can be taken as a serious league. I think also we as fans need to figure out ways we can push, which includes maybe not copying chance that we hear from you or maybe coming up with some more of our own original chance for our own team. Um, it includes doing wild stuff like uh, uh, sending off flares. Again, I'm not saying to set off flares. I'm not saying that. <laughs> I'm just saying we have to find ways to make noise, to stand out in all of the chaos that is globe, the global conversation in soccer so that people, again, will start looking at us like we're true soccer fans, true football fans, and not just like, oh, those those guys over in the United States. Yeah. Ultra wannabes. Yeah. yeah. Look, I'll say this, and then I'll, and then I'll, and then I'll leave it be. What all of this comes down to, the sanctions, the um, fine, it all comes down to one thing. Mm -hmm. Money. Money, 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 money. Apple doesn't want to lose viewers money. because people can't see it. Yeah. That is what it came down to because we you, you mentioned getting smoke from two stands to four capo stands just at Nashville. That's just normal smoke that's allowed. Yeah. They didn't want it hazing it even just a little bit it's because of money that's what it comes down to we as the supporters have to show that we don't play those games we're going to support and we're going to be loud maybe within rules maybe, maybe. some will, that might be bent stay. but we we're still... going to be we will We're stay gonna within be supporters. rules. If anybody from MLS is watching, we will stay within rules within our supporter group itself. Because we might because, be working hey, within them in a way that I just that might I be just pushing know. the boundaries, but we're gonna we're gonna support and we're gonna make I, I, it loud. I just know <laughs> we didn't start the fire, <laughs> but <laughs> we did. It was uh, always we burning. Sure, <laughs> we did make sure that we lit a flame in your hearts hopefully for mixed day 615 and nsc thank Episode you guys 10, baby oh yeah double digits oh, now yeah. man What's going on? Look, hey. at us. look at us bro we're thank like uh, we're walking now joining us for another episode of the mixtape 615 podcast if you are listening to this on apple podcast spotify wherever you listen to your podcast you can see the video side of this on youtube.com slash mixtape pod that is mixed or excuse me mixtape 615 pod bro get it that right mixtape 615 pod you can also join us on all of our socials instagram x facebook at mixtape 615 uh thank you guys for joining us a special thanks to my co-hosts here tunji and austin and a big 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 shout out to our boy doug branson we could not do this without you my friend thank you so much for all of you guys who have listened to us again make sure you join us in the mix mixtape615.com join us on all of our socials and join us for our next episode we are excited to continue this going and until that next episode this is the mixtape615 signing off in SCO.